to me at least, in terms of um, my thinking about how to move in the direction of a of a strong engineering stance rather than just you know craft, software development as a craft or or something. You know, if we want to be doing engineering, then we should be treating things as little experiments. You know, try stuff out and figure out how we're going to measure it, control the variables so that we can understand the results as far as we can, and then carry out the, the, the experiment and try and poke holes in it. Especially for the parts of engineering that are, and, and maybe this is going to be controversial, I think there are parts of development that are very much craft, and I think there are parts of engineering that are very much maybe engineering. And by that I mean there, there are aspects of being a developer where you really lean into craft and innovation and creativity. And a lot of that comes when we are interacting with the IDE, right? We are problem solving. We are even debugging, right? We're writing new code and new features and we're getting in the flow and we're, and we're doing all of this work. Now, what you're talking about, the engineering aspect of it, I think there's so much of the SDLC that we can just engineer the heck out of. And that helps us do our craft better because if we can reduce variability, improve predictability, um, make our, our test suites super reliable, super predictable, super fast, get our build and our integration and our outer loop set, then when I've pushed code, when, then I know it's done. It's not coming back to me. I'm not gonna get interrupted. All of the signals that I get, I can rely on, right? There's nothing worse, like it just really sucks to get interrupted by something that I've already pushed and code gets kicked back to me because something downstream, somebody else's code caused a failure and then I have to deal with something. Yeah. Or a build somewhere else, right? I thought I passed all of my tests and all my builds and then something yeah. gets flagged later and it comes back to me. Like, why? Why? No, <laughs> no. I don't want that, right? So, and I, I think that the two go hand in hand, right? Let me be in this wonderful loop of creating, exploring, and fast feedback so I can do this learning. I, but then the I, pieces I, I, that I want to engineer but, the heck yeah. out of, let me engineer the heck out of it. Just I, 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 I think we might have a slightly different take on what we mean by engineering based based on that answer. That's in, interesting. So, so I, I, I think often when we talk about engineering in software, we often forgive me being <laughs> arguing with you. But, no, but, please. But but I I think that often we think of engineering in terms of production things, you know, production yeah. lines, you know, you know, fixed rigid outcomes. And I don't think that's what engineering is about. I think if you, I think the example that always goes through my head when when I think of engineering is you know the people designing and building the Curiosity rover. They had no clue what the answer was. They, they, they were trying stuff out. I think that engineering is probably at the peak of human creativity. So I, I, I think and, you know, that's our form of engineering. So I, 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 don't, I don't think you know, engineering is the non-creative part and craft is the creative part. And I'm not sure that you were saying exactly that, but, but I, I, think, I, I think that I think that we can, you know, we can have guide rails that that constrain our creativity and and help us to get to better outcomes. I suppose mm -hmm. I'm saying. Yeah. No, I I agree, and I think when we are creating, then that part is is absolutely craft. I think it's frustrating when the guardrails and the the way that we get our code where it should be going stops us and creates friction and creates blockers that's that's frustrating and, and i love that you called that out right because there are infrastructure engineers where their craft is creating that infrastructure right like that's that's what they're doing and like like that's their jam and god bless yeah. them <laughs> and that's where i do like a whole bunch of my work right is yeah. is in a lot of this like pull request out like all through outer loop through release engineering like that's the hard, interesting, like challenging work. And also, what are the ways that we can make this kind of like a this delightful experience so that 
I, I guess another way to think about it is it feels really frustrating. And I continue to hear from engineers because I'm only a like sloppy hacker at this point. Um, it's really frustrating when you're writing code and you're kind of done, like, like you've done like the, the, what your real work, what your primary work is. And then you've got to go write up a whole bunch of code to like get it through the rest of the infrastructure process. Mm -hmm. When it doesn't feel like, when that, that feels like toil. Yeah. So, so, you know, if I want to be creative, I definitely want fast feedback and to be making progress in small steps and all of those things. That's, that, that's, that's how we, that's how we grow things. We, we, we evolve, you know, complicated things. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes. So please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.